Okay, welcome. This is Mr. Mac Paul. And today we are going to look at the Frockmorton plot. So, from current slide. So, we're looking at the Frockmorton plot uh, from 1583. So, by the way, um, if you've uh, watched a film of Elizabeth, there's uh, one called The Golden Age. So, if you've watched The Golden Age, um, you'll have noticed that there's a girl called Bessie Frockmorton. Now, she was actually related to Sir Francis Frockmorton. They were cousins. The Frockmortons were a famous noble family in Elizabethan England who actually, um, some of them were ministers in Elizabeth's government. But the family's rather large, and there was a Catholic offshoot of this family of which Sir Francis Frockmorton belonged to. So uh, Mary Queen of Scots is again involved in this plot. She claims to be innocent. Oh, sorry, just got an ankle. Right, she claims to be innocent. She will not be executed as a consequence of this plot, but she's basically, if you think of it like baseball, three strikes on your out. She's uh, she's going to get on a second strike today. So, as an English Catholic, Sir Francis Frockmorton wanted to replace Elizabeth with Mary Queen of Scots. A little bit of context. Mary Queen of Scots arrived to England in 1568. In 1569, you had the revolt of the Northern Isles. In 1570, Pope Pius V excommunicates Elizabeth. In 1571, you have the Foul Rodolphi plot. Ten years later, I know it's a bit of a, a long time, but in 1581, fines for accused sentence are increased by Elizabeth. Now, these are massively increased, actually. Massively, massively increased. So, actually, I don't know the way that's been punctuated there. So, let's that. Okay, so Elizabeth the first, she changes, changes um, the fines for recusants from one shilling a week to twenty pounds, which is a massive increase. <clears throat> so Catholics are very displeased about this kind of harsher treatment which they get from Elizabeth. So you may remember last lesson, I said RTB one two three. Rodolphe, Frockmorton, Babington. So this is the second of three plots that we're looking at today. And that's the order. RTB, one, two, three. So let's go through this. Well, there are some sim there's, there's some great similarities. So all three plots share the, the similarity that they want Elizabeth off the throne and they want Mary Queen of Scots on the throne. Okay? Very clear. So Catholics didn't like having a Protestant queen. That's very, very clear. Which is why Sir Francis Frockmorton has a deep love of Mary Queen of Scots. It's rumoured that he did actually love her. He met her and became enamoured with her. And yeah, again, you can see just a similarity between all three plots. Okay, they want they all want uh, a Catholic noble wanting to assassinate Elizabeth and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. So the actual plan was to get Henry Duke of Guise. Now you may recognise that name there, Guise. The re reason you'd recognise that name is because Mary Queen of Scots' mother was Mary of Guise. So Henry Duke of Guise was actually a relative of Mary Queen of Scots, and that's why she was she wanted to use a French army to invade England. Now, King Philip II of Spain was going to finance this. Remember, he has a vast empire in South America, which brings in a lot of gold. So we've got Henry, Duke of Guise here, and we have got Philip II there. So that's the plan. Get Henry, the Duke, Duke of Guise, her relative, to invade England, and he would be sponsored by King Philip II of Spain. Got the army, and we've got the finances to back it. So by this point in 1581, Mary, Queen of Scots, has been under house arrest for a very long time. She's been, on, she's been under house arrest, sorry, 1583, sorry, by 1583, Mary Queen Scots has been under house arrest for 15 years. You can see why she's starting to get itchy feet and a bit angry. Okay. Now, obviously, these two don't get on very well with Mary Queen Scots plotting against Elizabeth and Mary Queen Scots being under house arrest. So Sir Francis Rockmorton thought that Elizabeth thought that England would return to its Catholic roots. If Elizabeth I was replaced. Now, I think this is a bit far-fetched, to be honest, because 
the south of England was really now extremely Protestant and even puritanical. So I think that was a bit of a naive ambition. Now, other people, or a very notable other significant individual that's involved in this plot is ben Bernardino de Mendoza, and he's the Spanish ambassador in England. And to Francis Frockmorton's actions in basically cozying up to this ambassador and the French ambassador, it doesn't escape Walsingham's notice. Now, this man here is a major, 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 major figure. In fact, I've got an activity today which is kind of based around him. So, Sir Francis Walsingham. Now, there's a lot of for Sir Francis. It's a very, very popular name. Sir Francis Drake, Sir Francis Walsingham, Sir Francis from Morton. There's a lot of Sir Francis. But anyway, Walsingham is a huge figure on your course. He's an excellent spy master. And he's actually a local lad as well. Uh, Footscray. That used to belong to him. He was born in Chislehurst. But anyway, I digress. He he knows what Frockmorton's up to, and he puts him under surveillance, and he lets the plot develop so that it, they can incriminate themselves. Anyway, he eventually arrests Sir Francis Frockmorton, and he puts him into the Tower of London. He's interrogated, i.e. tortured, and he's executed. So in 1584, he is executed. That's the end of him. So let's recap. All plots have one thing in common. Catholics want a Catholic monarch. Religion is a direct cause of these plots. Guise is the nephew of Mary of Guise, which makes him the cousin of Mary Queen of Scots. He's a relative that could bring an army. Philip II is the most powerful and richest man in the world. His South American empire makes him a Catholic uh, super powerful man. And this is pre-Armada. You can see already like... So you can see in 1583... Five years before, yet again, you can see Philip II of Spain wants to invade England or is plotting to do so. But remember, the north of England is very sympathetic, sympathetic to Catholicism. And this is a bit of a religious point, but many people sought solace in the Virgin Mary. So this is a major religious difference. Okay, so the Catholic peasants really found comfort in her. She's, if you think about it, Christianity is very male and Jesus' mother offered them kind of a feminine comfort a feminine a kind of spiritual mother figure okay and they thought that the protestants were trying to remove that comfort from from uh from them and so the catholics were antagonistic to this which is why they may have kept on rebelling so direct religious calls there don't forget that an ambassador was the voice of philip ii in england and this shows how england and spain were kind of involved in the cold war a religious Cold War, which started to warm up prior to the Armada in 1588. And you can see that, that Bernardino de Mendoza is basically, from Elizabeth's point of view, a bad guy. He's an enemy. He's a spy. He's collaborating in this plot. He was expelled from England as a consequence. Okay? And we can see that Walsham's good old-fashioned spy and did the job. He's undercover surveillance. You can see he was definitely an effective man in his role in cracking this first plot. And obviously, Sir Francis Frockmorton, he was tortured for information, traitor, and as a consequence, he is <laughs> he's executed for treason. That is the end of him. So the key characters in this plot, Spanish ambassador, Bernardino de Mendoza, Sir Francis Frockmorton, Henry, Duke of Guise, Sir Francis Walsingham, Mary Queen of the Cots, Queen of Scots, and King Philip of Spain would be the financier. Again, an international plot. An international plot against Elizabeth. You can understand why she starts to become very paranoid about Catholics and what Catholics are doing uh, or essentially want to do to her, to kill her, to remove her. Now, if people wanted to kill you, you'd feel very, very paranoid. And that's why you can see, as a consequence, there are some new laws that come into being. So... Elizabeth is obviously a key person in this plot. Now, her patience with Mary Queen of Scots is running thin, okay? Don't forget that despite the fact that Elizabeth had a Frockmorton as her lady-in-waiting, these Catholics from Frockmortons were not forgiven for their actions. And obviously, Elizabeth Frockmorton would eventually marry Sir Walter Raleigh, who was one of Elizabeth's favourites, which made her very jealous. But anyway, that's, that's another matter. 
So the causes of consequences of the Frutmorton plot, obviously the religious and sectarian tension, okay? Catholic versus Protestant. It's a major, major cause. Remember, religion is everything. It's law. It's identity. It's, it encompasses everything on this course, okay? So the motivations of power and money might transcend religion. And the fact that Spain was a global superpower, Philip was a, one of the most powerful men in the world, aside from the Pope, and he wanted to extend his influence, okay? Consequences, as I've said, Elizabeth's patience with her cousin was wearing thin, okay? And I think Elizabeth was coming to realise that Mary Queen of Scots' presence in England was always going to inspire rebellions or plots, okay? Also, another consequence were the worsening relations with Spain. The Spanish diplomats were expelled from the country, and, you know, it's hardly a surprise that uh, these relations are worsening with the fact that the Spanish are actively trying to kill the English Queen. So not a deep, deep surprise. And another important consequence was that William of Orange, okay, the leader of the Dutch Protestant, was murdered by a Catholic. So Parliament responded by passing the Bond of Association, which meant that if Elizabeth was murdered, Parliament would make sure that the murderers would be punished along with anyone who benefited from Elizabeth's death, which was basically saying to Mary, Queen of Scots, if you just be a bit more patient and wait for Elizabeth to die rather than kill her, you will, you will inherit the throne, probably. But if you, or actually a lot of Protestants would have tried to block that happening, so this was a massive warning, a massive warning to Mary, Queen of Scots. Any more treachery would be punished by death, okay? And Elizabeth's death would not be rewarded, would not be rewarded by, um, how do we say this, the, the English crown, okay? So there we go. We've gone through the causes, the events, and the consequences of the Frockmorton plot. Now, there's another plot. And again, we're going to look at next lesson. We're going to look at the Babington plot. And you're really going to see for Mary Queen of Scots, there's three strikes and you're out. She's going to be executed quite soon after that next plot, which isn't too cracking for her. Ah, cracking. Okay, all right. Sorry, I had to end it on a dad joke. I do apologize. So I'm going to stop recording, and that will be your video. This is Mr. Matt Paul signing out.